be reading verse 3 and 4. Psalms 37, verse 3 and 4. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation, um, so I hope it doesn't affect anybody too much. It'll be applied a little, a little different. Good to go. Everybody has to say amen. Amen. Trust in the Lord and do good. Then you will, then you will live safely in the land and prosper. Take delight in the Lord, and He will give you your heart's desires. Amen. Amen. I'm going to have uh, Alex and Miriam pray for the Lord and myself. Amen. Amen. Oh, gloria a Dios, aleluya. All right, be seated. Amen. <laughs> All right, so, um, God bless everyone again. Amen. Uh, my name is Hector, if you guys don't know me. Um, I've been in the Navy for a while now, and all throughout my career, I've traveled to different places. I've been stationed in different, um, different duties on ships, on shore duty, in radar rooms and towers, and everywhere that I've been, in those 18 years, the Navy has two descriptive words where they categorize their personnel, you know, and one of the words, the first word is squared away, right? When they talk about squared away, they're talking about, they kind of compare a person to a square, right? A square has straight, sharp, 90 degree corners, right? It's very distinctive. Um, a squared away person, in definition, is someone who works at an elevated level and maintains it. Right? This person is the person who their uniform is pressed at all times, it's clean, their shoes are polished, they're shiny, um, they have a clean haircut, they're always shaved. Uh, they're the person that arrives 15 minutes early, they're the, the last person to leave. They're the person that their medals are to measurement, they measure and place them there. They're the, that go-to person that if you have a problem, if you have a situation that you need, that's the person you're going to go to. Because you know they're going to have the answer. Okay? Amen. Now the other category where they, or the other categorization where they put their people is a dirt bag. Now this is not a compliment, right? You're, you're comparing someone to a bag of dirt, which is a bag of dirt is sloppy, it's dirty. Um, in definition, a dirt bag is someone who is content with just getting by. Okay, it's that person with their uniform is sloppy. Their boots are dusty, they look like they've been chewed up, right? Their, their medals, they're kind of just item on their uniform, there's no measurements taken. It's the person who just kind of sneaks in just in time at work, or sometimes arrives late. Um, it's the person who just does the minimum, okay? If he's never going to volunteer for anything, he's going to sit around, and he's going to sit there until, some, until someone tells them what to do. Amen. Amen. Now, both these people are part of the Navy, or part of the military, right? They both get paid the same. They both probably have the same job. They both go to work during the same hours. The only difference, one has a higher standard than the other. One is not satisfied with just getting by, okay? One has, is, has a desire to do more than just the basics. Amen. Amen? Amen. All right, I'm a little nervous. Looks <coughs> like I have a... Mouthful of cotton balls, <laughs> but I'll be all right. <laughs> all right, cool. <laughs> this last um, this last duty station that I was at, I was at Great Lakes RTC, which is basically Navy boot camp, and I was a drill sergeant for the Navy. And during that time, the first two weeks for the recruits is when they had the, the hardest time, right? They had, they had no idea what was going. People were screaming at them from all different directions. 
They had to learn everything brand new. They had to learn the way they talked, how to wear their clothes, how to fold their stuff, how to stand, how to sit, how to eat. Everything was totally different from the 18 years previous to that point that they lived, right? They had to learn everything brand new. They had to learn the Navy's history. Everything was completely different, okay? And during the, that time, it was very easy for them to get discouraged because everything they did is wrong. There was no way that they were able, that they were able to do everything, meet every task that we put on them, right? And that was, that was basically the purpose, right? Just to kind of see what they were made of. But, based, but during that time, doesn't matter what they um, doesn't matter how hard they tried, they couldn't meet the task. Okay, and usually around week two, I would have a conversation with them because their moral, morale, their spirits were just really low, and I would just tell them, "Look, nothing is easy in the beginning. Nothing is easy in the beginning, but you have to work at it, right? And to be honest, things do not get easier, right? You just get better at it. Okay, and you have to." I'm not asking for perfection. I'm just asking for not to make the same mistakes today that you made yesterday, right? There has to be some sort of growth. There has to be some sort of progress in your career, or else you're going to fall behind and you're not going to make it. Okay? And that's kind of what I want to talk about today. Um, I want to talk about three things that God, or the, the, these two verses, showed me that where I needed to be better, where I needed to grow, where I was just getting by, you know, what I was basically doing the minimums. Um, and the first one is trust, right? Sounds pretty, pretty simple. Everybody says, trust God, trust God, you know, and it's really easy to say. It's really easy to say, but sometimes it's, it's, it's harder, you know, it's, it's, it's easier said than done. You know, sometimes it's hard to trust God, and it, and it brings me back to this to this moment when I was, um, actually before I go there, as I was, as I was um, studying or, or reading the scriptures, trying to find what I was going to talk to, I came up with a couple scriptures, I'm not going to read them all, but um, a few of them, the first one is Psalms 13.5, and it says, but I trust in your unfailing love, I will rejoice because you have rescued me, Amen. past tense, those who have, those who, and uh, Psalms 9.10, those who know your name trust in you. For you, O oh Lord, do not abandon those who search for you. Amen. First Kings 8.56 Praise the Lord who has given rest to his people Israel, just as he promised. Not one word has failed of all the wonderful promises he gave through his servant Moses. You know, and as I was reading them, the conclusion I came through is that all these people, they knew, they had a personal relationship. Right there. So in order to trust someone, you actually have to know who you're trusting. Right? It's kind of hard to put trust in someone that you have no idea who that person is. Okay, and I'll, I'm going to put this mic down. See like I'm not using it anyway. Um, so when I was stationed in, in Pearl Harbor, I was during the time that I had to pick orders. And um, my chief, my supervisor, came up to me. He was like, hey, these orders came up. For to be a uh, RDC, which is a drill sergeant for the Navy boot camp, um, he says I think you should take them because I think it will set you apart from everywhere else. Since this usually this job usually doesn't apply to my specific job, the people that have my job usually don't get sent to do this specific job just because we're undermanned and they need us all to do uh, air traffic control is what I do. Um, so I was like, okay, I was like, I'll think about it, but. Um, I don't want to give you an answer yet. I need to talk to my wife, make sure it's okay, you know, make sure we're all on the same page. So we talked through it, time passed, and you know, in my heart I was feeling that that's where God wanted me to go. You know, I felt like that's where He was sending me. You know, and I never said, I never told them, yes, this is where I, I want to go, I want to take those orders up, can I apply for them? One day I just walked into the, to work and I received the orders. Without putting any application or anything, the orders were mine. You know, at that moment, I got kind of, I got kind of scared, kind of nervous, right? Because I felt like I didn't fit that mold to be that person, to be yelling at people, um, to be that dis disciplinarian. You know, and everyone that I told, hey, I'm going to be a RDC, I'm going to be a drill sergeant.
they all came with the same answer. You? Really? You're so quiet. Um, you're so laid back. You're so nice. I don't see you doing that. And to be honest, I felt the exact same way. You know, so when I got there, you know, it was a surprise to me. Because when I got there, I excelled. You know, I was first in my class. Um, I, you know, I was getting all these awards. I was actually pretty, doing very well. And that's kind of the reason why I'm standing here today. You know, and I told Alex and Miriam that, yes, I would do that. Because I, it, it reminded me, um, when they called me, I, they asked, do, do you mind preaching? And I, they kind of caught me off guard. I, I mean, I just woke up. So it was kind of a shocker, you know, kind of woke up even faster. But, um, <laughs> but I had to think about it. And as I was thinking, um, it reminded me of that moment. And I was like, if God, if God could elevate me somewhere where I wasn't supposed to be elevated, Amen. somewhere where I wasn't supposed to be successful, Amen. if He put me on high there, Amen. how can I tell Him no, no? Amen. No. Amen. Yes. Praise God. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. We worship you, brother. We worship you, Jesus. So, what I learned from that situation is, you know, it's so good to read the scriptures and know what God did for Moses, know God, what the God did for Daniel, for David, for Joseph, for Abraham. It's so good to remind ourselves on what He did, all the miracles that He that He. Um, that came true, you know, all his promises. But it, it was even more, it was even better for me when it was personal, when I could actually remember what God did for me, you know, when Amen. he came through for me. Um, and that's somewhere, that's, some, that's somewhere where I, I, where I felt like I've grown, that I could actually look and not panic and be like, okay, God, you've shown constantly, every day God does something, you know, in our lives that we can be like, to kind of confirm he's still there. Yes. You know? Yes. Another reason why I felt like I had a hard time trusting God was because the wait, right? I don't I don't like to wait. I feel like waiting is sometimes difficult. Mostly because we don't know the outcome. We don't know what's going to happen. You know, and sometimes we feel like God forgot about us. Or Amen. God took too long. Amen. You know, and it reminded me as I was um, kind of meditating and thinking about this. It reminded me of when Jesus went to Lazarus to go rescue Lazarus. As I reread it, um, I noticed that God, that Jesus took his time. That when he found out that Lazarus was sick, he didn't rush. Right, to go see Lazarus. He took his time. He actually told him, no, I, I'm, I'm going to wait. It's not time yet. And when he decided to go, Martha came up to him and was like, uh, he told him, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would have not have died. And Mary told him the exact same thing. Lord, if you would have been here, my brother would not have died. I felt like sometimes we do that. We think God was late. You know, God arrived late. He missed his, he missed his timing. When all actuality, his timing is perfect. Yes. Amen. Um, yes. And it kind of, um, I've been taking this chief exam, like uh, for, which is basically the, a test that I have to take to reach my next pay grade or my, uh, to go up in rank. Um, I've been taking this test nine years now, right? And for seven years, I was, uh, I couldn't pass the test. I couldn't pass the test, and I was like, Lord, what, what, what's happening? Why, 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 can't I, why can't I pass this? Why can't I get over this hurdle? And I remember that, that seventh test, or that preparing for the eighth test, I was telling him, I was like, Lord, I, I really don't know, you know what to do. I, I feel like this test owns me, right? I feel like I can't get past it. Um, talk about feeling like a failure, seven... It's, this test is only once a year, so for seven years I've had failed this exam. You know, I haven't, I, I wasn't able to pass it. So I was like, Lord, help me to at least pass the exam. You know, and um, I felt at that time it was going to happen. Like I really thought, I, I, I did everything that I could. You could ask the marriage. All I was doing was studying. I was doing everything that I could 
to, to pass that exam. And I remember that day when the results came out, I was with my division and I had a few minutes to to check and I, I arrived because I had to take the division somewhere else. And they're like, hey, the results came out, um, go check. So I locked, locked, it, locked, uh, locked into the computer and I went to check my results and I saw that I, I, I didn't pass. And I, like, I felt so discouraged. You know, I felt again, you know, after doing everything that I could do, I felt so, I felt embarrassed, not only because I've been taking this test for so long, and I haven't, been, I haven't passed it, and I felt people that I've trained, that I've helped, people that were younger than me, were like passing me, and I was here stuck. And I also felt helpless, right? I felt helpless because I couldn't, I couldn't do it. You know, I, I, I had no answers for what I had to do. So I was, I, I was feeling so bad, so discouraged that I told them, like, I, I need to leave. I need to, I can't be here. I can't let the, the recruits see me like this when I'm supposed to be like their, their motivator. I, I, I can't motivate nobody right now. So I remember I went home um, and the day passed, you know, I stayed home kind of moping around, not feeling so great. The next day when I, when I went home, I mean, when I went to work, someone, as I was walking, someone said, hey, congratulations. And I was kind of just, you know, I, I wasn't into it, so I just kind of, I kind of brushed them off and I kept going uh, upstairs to my classroom and I saw someone else, I'm like, hey, congratulations. And it caught my attention this time because I was, I was like, what are you congratulating me for? You know? And he said, oh, because you made board. I was like, yeah, I made board, right? And I, I kind of just, I, I didn't want to talk about it. So as the, t the few minutes were passing, I was like, what, what, you know, what, what are they talking about? So I logged into the computer again, and I did make board. Like, I did pass the exam that time, you know? <laughs> I looked, when I looked the day before, I actually looked at my test results for last year, you know? Because mine hadn't updated yet. And I felt like God at that moment was telling me, do not doubt me, you know? Wow, glory to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. No, do not doubt me. I'm in control, regardless if you see it or not, right? I'm the one that has your life, right? I'm the one that has a perfect plan for you, right? A plan for good, a plan not to destroy you. Amen. Amen. And during that time, I did make board, but I didn't get selected, right? Because in order to get selected to the next pay grade, you have to... Um, you have to pass that exam. Once you pass that exam, then you have to present your package to bring it up so they can select you to see who they're going to select to the next pay grade. Right? So it's, it's a long process. But I was so happy that year that even if I didn't make it, just the fact that I got over that hurdle, you know, it was a, vic a huge victory for me. Amen. Um, so I took it again this year, this January, and we just found out I, I did make it again. Amen. You know? So it wasn't a, last year wasn't a fluke, right? Like I kind of... It's, it's that, that, that's past me, you know, but my prayer is no longer, you know, let me advance, right? My prayer is now, Lord, let your will be done. Amen, amen. You know, amen. You know what's best sometimes, you know, we, we want things our way that we think we know what's best for us, but we have no clue, you know. Yes. Um, God knows the future and he has the bigger picture. Amen. amen. I'm waiting on that. Um, so the second thing that God told me I need to work on is... Do good, right? Do good. And I was like, you know, do good, that's pretty pretty simple. I know between right and wrong, right? Um, no big deal. But as I was going deeper into the scriptures or trying to, you know, go deeper into the scriptures, and I, I realized that good, to do, the word good in Hebrew actually means what is beautiful. Um, so to do good is actually doing what God perceives as beautiful, right? So, I don't know if you ever heard the saying, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So, when you're doing good, you're, you're doing something that God perceives as beautiful. Amen. Amen. And I was asking myself, I was like, do I, are my actions, are my actions pleasing to you? Am I doing, you know, what you desire? Are, are this, do my actions make you proud? 
mm. make you proud to you know to call me your son. Mm. Um, Amen. And as I was meditating, actually the other day I was at work and uh, I have his boss, and he's not he's not the most friendliest person, right? He's a uh, He's actually pretty harsh, kind of bully, like a bully demeanor. He's very upfront in your face. And um, remember, he asked me, he asked me, hey, did you take care of this? And for some reason, I was, I was like, yes, it's done. And it wasn't done. <laughs> and as I was saying it, I, like, I felt like my inside was like, no, what are you doing? You know, like, not, you're, you're lying. And I, and I don't know why I decided to lie. Um, because I had a valid excuse, you know, I had, I had reasons why that wasn't accomplished, but just to get him off my back to not hear him anymore, I just, I just told him, yes, it's done, you know, don't bother me, you know, just, okay, it's, 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 it's over with. And it reminded me of, was it Paul that said, I do the, I do the, the good things that I want to do, I don't do, and the evil that I don't want to do, is what, is what I do. I felt I felt like that's that what was happening. Like I did not like I've been I've been trying to do the right thing, and it's the little things, right, that get you. Uh, has anybody been bitten by by an elephant here? No, right. How about a mosquito? Right. And it's like the right. But the, it's the little things. It's the little things that get us. It's not the big thing. The big things we kind of we kind of know how to how to stay away. How to you know not get bit by the by the big things. But those little things, those everyday little things are the ones that get us that we have to constantly be aware of to, to not screw up and constantly, you know, do good. Um, yeah. <laughs> and since do, what's good means beautiful, it, it drew me to uh, Corinthians. Um, where God talks about love, I figured if, you know, if, you know, beauty, love kind of goes together. So I was reading it, and um, I'm just going to read it real quick. Read four, I'm going to read four through seven, but the, the one that actually applied, that kind of ministered to me was uh, verse five, and it says Corinthians yeah, 13, 4, 7. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way, and that kind of kind of kind of touched me a little bit because how I feel like sometimes we do things we only do things when it benefits us or when we get our way or you know what am I getting out of it you know sometimes we don't do good just because there's nothing in return you know and uh, Titus three fourteen says only people our people must learn to do good by meeting the urgent needs of others. Then they will not be unproductive, right? It's not about us. Mm -hmm. It's about helping someone else, about, you know, giving back to someone else, helping someone else in need. Mm -hmm. and it is not irritable, and it keeps no record of being wronged. Right? And I've done this too, you know. Sometimes I just, we decide, or I decide not to do good just because that person did something to me, or that person kind of rubbed me the wrong way, or that person talked to me the way they were supposed to, or so many different reasons, you know, and they say, do not keep, love keeps no record of being wrong, right? There shouldn't be, no, I'm only going to do this because you're nice to me, or you just got to do good regardless. Um, Luke 6.33, and if you do good only to those who do good to you, why should you get credit? Even sinners do that much. It doesn't get any clearer than that. Right? Matt said I would only preach for like 10 minutes. I don't know what time I'm going now, but we'll see. Um, the third thing that, uh, that God spoke to me was delight. Right? On uh, verse, what's that, verse 4, it was like, take the light in the Lord. And um, I remember reading this, uh, this verse, I was in Pensacola, and one of my New Year's resolutions was like, I wanted to read the Bible a little bit more. So I, uh, I bought a 
daily devotional. And it was that was one of the, the scriptures for that day, for that devotional. Um, and it said, take delight. And I kind of just skimmed through it. But the word delight caught my attention. And I was trying to figure, I was like, okay, I kind of have an idea of what it means. Right? But I, I, I really wasn't sure what it meant. Um, and it means to take great pleasure. And as I meditated on that, I felt conviction, right? Because I felt like I wasn't taking great pleasure. I felt like I was just meeting, I was getting the checks in the box, right? I felt like I was reading that scripture, that, that book, that um, just to read the scripture, just to pray, just to get that check in the box. You know, I prayed five minutes, okay, I prayed good. I read the scripture, okay, good. And there, I really wasn't taking any pleasure in it, right? I was just doing it just to meet just to say I did it, right? There was no, there was no interaction. There was no, there was no desire, no enjoyment in me actually, um, in me actually doing these things that I so that I felt what a Christian did, right? It's kind of like, like eating not because you're hungry, but eating just because it's dinner time, right? Like I was missing the appetite. I was just doing it because it was a routine. I was just doing it just to do it. Um, and then I kept, I kept reflecting on myself, like, was I go, why was I going to church? Was I going to church just to fellowship, just to, because I had a part, because I was a leader, because I had to play an instrument, because it was the thing to do, because it's what Christians do. It's because, was, it, was I going just because it's Sunday, and mm. that's what, that's what, people do on Sundays, you know, and I, I, I realized that my, my perspective was off, my intentions were off, I was doing all the right things for all the wrong reasons, you know, and um, that's something that I needed to work on um, in my life, right, so now I'm kind of more conscious, and I'm kind of, you know, I try to prepare myself, I'm coming to church, I'm not rushing here, you know, I'm not trying to fight with the marriage. You know, I'm trying to get in a, in a, you know, trying to trying to get my mind, get in the atmosphere to worship, to praise, right, to see my father, to see, you know, to see my savior, to give him my best. Um, and now we don't fight. I'll just say, you know, <laughs> we don't fight much. Fix it. <laughs> Psalms 122 one says, when they say, let's go to the house of God, my heart leaped for joy. I thought that was pretty cool, and I hadn't felt that in a while. You know? so, um, and on a side note, well not, uh, Zephaniah 3.17 says, for the Lord your God is living among you. He is a mighty Savior. He will take delight in you. And will, with gladness, with his love, he will calm all your fears. He will rejoice over you with joyful songs. Amen. And I just found that, I actually found it kind of amazing that God is not asking of you anything that he's not giving back, right? He's asking you to delight in him, yeah. and he's saying right back that he's going to delight in you. Amen. So I thought that was powerful. Amen. 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 That's all I have, you know, um... These are basic things, right? To trust God, to do good, you know, to delight in Him. These are things that probably I do most of the time. Probably I do them at least once every day, but they're not consistent, right? And I don't want to be stuck in mediocre, right? I want to actually grow, do better, um, to reach that next level, right? I'm pretty sure we all want to get, all want to grow, and want to stuck where, be stuck where we're at, you know, and not just in our spiritual walk, but I want to be better as a husband, better as a son, better, you know, as a father when that opportunity comes, you know, every, every, in every aspect of our lives, we should want to be able to grow. Amen. 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 Yes. 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 God bless you. Amen.